You're led through a winding labyrinth of tunnels by your goblin guide. You ask him, where is the treasure? Right this way. <laughs> All treasure goes to the king. Suddenly, a massive figure emerges, neither goblin nor dragon. Its wings unfurl as it rears back and vomits a horde of acidic treasure in your direction. So this really isn't a reference to anything. I just got obsessed with the idea of a goblin dragon and had to make it. As always, I'm working in 28mm tabletop scale, so I can throw this into a Dungeons & Dragons game. I always use a lot of reference when I'm sculpting, but since this was a creature of my own design, I had to make my own reference, so I decided to start with a concept sketch. I wanted this to look like a Jim Henson creature, but a bit more uncanny, a bit more me. The head is inspired by goblin sharks. They have a really nasty, toothy maw, which is perfect for a dragon. The body is mostly T-Rex because they have cute, round tummies. Also, I thought it would be funny to give it tiny wings that definitely couldn't support its body weight. I made sure I was happy with the sketch before moving on, as this would be my primary reference. But I was really liking the way it was looking, so I moved on to the sculpting phase. As always, I started with an armature wire skeleton, but the real bulk of the armature comes from the tin foil. This is where it really starts to take shape. Next, I put a thin layer of clay over the entire thing and started roughing out the muscles. Then I added some armature wire for the arms. I waited until I bulked out the body to add these to make sure that they were in the right place. I covered the wires with clay and began forming the shoulders and arm muscles. At this stage, I'm trying to work really quickly and not fuss over any details. This is essentially sketching with clay. A lot of the work I'm doing now gets covered up later as I go on. I wanted to give him thick, muscular legs that could bear the weight of his big, round body, but keep his arms kind of spindly and creepy, maintaining some of those more goblin-like features. As I sculpt, I'm looking at photos of different creatures to see where the muscles should go. I'm not good enough with anatomy to eyeball this, especially with something so weird. There are a million different 3D models and photo references out there, so I highly recommend not making things more difficult for yourself and using reference when you need it. Here I'm adding a big, saggy, thick neck. Kind of a reference to the Goblin King from the Hobbit movies, but those movies don't exist. Finally, I added a lump of clay for the head. This finishes off the silhouette so I can see what needs adjusting. I looked back to my initial sketch and saw that it was more hunched, so I added more clay to bulk it out. With the silhouette looking good, I start refining the muscles, adding more where needed, and smoothing out the clay. And now, onto the face. To create a perfect goblin face, you start with a cursed beluga whale. Perfect. Let's leave that for a while. No, no, I insist. It's time to do something for the feet freaks among us. I start by dividing the clay, then using a round tool, I begin rounding out the individual toes. Then I further refine them with a silicone tool. You like that? You nasty. Speaking of nasty, let's get back to the head. The next stage in making the perfect goblin head is to make the most busted Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Then add a nose. This was the nose from my initial concept art, but I ended up swapping it to look more like a goblin shark. This helped make it look more dragony. These eyeballs, or dragon balls, are baked spheres of Sculpey I made earlier. Having a solid eyeball to sculpt around is really helpful. Finally, it's time for tooths. These teeth are also pre-baked, so they don't get squished when placed. Placing the teeth within an unbaked mouth was very tricky, but with a brand new nose and a mouthful of teeth, he's looking very handsome. This handsome man needs some upsettingly human hands. This is my first time sculpting hands of this size, and as any sculptor will tell you, hands are the worst. I took my time though, slowly refined the shapes until I was happy, and definitely didn't completely remake them off camera. And he wouldn't be a dragon without horns, so I took some armature wire, bent it into shape, covered it with green stuff, waited for that to cure, and then wrapped that in thin, overlapping layers of Sculpey until it looked like horns. And while we're on the subject of spikes, I'm gonna add some claws to them toes. All the claws and spikes were pre-baked so that I could easily squeeze them into place. The sculpt is pretty much done, all it needs is more spikes, and some textures. 
I went for the classic snake-like underbelly and scaly back. Classic dragon. I brushed on some isopropyl alcohol, and then with my homemade texture roller, rolled on texture. This is a super quick and easy way to make scale texture that I learned from North of the Border. Then I added the hands. I waited until now because I didn't want them to accidentally get squished. Wow, those are definitely the hands I sculpted earlier. They look so different in this light. The final texture I'm adding is a bunch of individual scales in select areas. And then more spikes. Because dragon. More horns. Because dragon. And finally, because dragon... Wings. I wanted to show you the first wings I made. I've seen wings made out of fabric with latex added for texture, but either I chose the wrong fabric or that doesn't work at this scale because you could really see the fabric texture. So I tried a different technique that I saw on the curious creations of Christine McConnell, layering latex with toilet paper. Now you may be thinking, why not just use clay? Thin Sculpey is very brittle, so it's likely that the wings would have broken. But also, since this is a one-off piece, it didn't need to be just one material. Latex can create a very skin-like texture, and if thin enough, lets through light, which is very cool for dragon wings. And as you can see, it does look really cool. But the wire's still showing, so I added some green stuff to cover it. This also allowed me to add a bit more detail. And once it was all done, I adhered the wings in place. The last step is to make a base for this thing. I used balsa wood because it's what I had on hand. Anything sturdy would work. But instead, I chose woodwork. I cut out a shape I liked with an X-Acto blade, then feathered the edges a little, finally finishing it with a layer of modeling paste. The last of my five-year-old jar. And finally, it's time to prime. As you can see, I blocked out the wings because I didn't want the latex to get covered. I started the painting process with a sloppy base coat over the whole thing. In retrospect, I should have planned out the colors when I did my concept sketch. I ended up nailing the colors on the first go, but this rarely happens for me. With a piece this big, you don't want to waste time repainting it over and over again. Also, I always make sure to get the inside of the mouth early on in the painting process because this step can be very messy. I painted the eyes white, later to be colored yellow. Then I painted the horns brown. Unfortunately, I didn't realize how bad this color looked until I painted all the horns the same shade. Instead of a mistake, we'll call this an undercoat. I felt like the mouth didn't look red enough, so I added a few drops of acrylic ink inside and swished it around. This worked, but the ink I used is meant for paper and takes forever to dry. This ended up being a pain to work around as I painted the teeth later on, but it does look horrifying. To contrast the horror of the mouth, I added some rosy bits to the nose. And now watch an expert add a dark shade under the- Ugh. I think I've come around on painting minis. I always hated painting them and wondered why they didn't look as good as I wanted them to. I watched a bunch of tutorials and my takeaway from all of them is that you need to take your time. Good mini painters shade individual scales. They add light sources. There's not really a trick to it. Just take your time and take pleasure in the process. Next, I started on the shadows and highlights. To do this, I added a blue-green to the shadowed areas and a yellow-green for the highlighted areas. I then shaded the tan areas with a purpley-brown. Next, I started painting the teeth. You can see the effect the wet ink is having. Very annoying. And as promised, I gave him the classic yellow goblin eyes. My initial idea for the horns was to make it look like bones were growing out of his head, but I ended up going with black because it looked better with the colors I chose. Then I added some veins to the wings to make them look a bit more alive, and a white highlight on the latex to give it a bit more texture. And then I did what a good painter would do. I painted individual scales. Then I added the hilarious forward-facing eyes, some blue for the veiny wings, and ripped them up a bit while I was there. And finally, a mix of brown and gray for the base, and we're on to the... All dragons have hair. Dragon hair. But what material could I... This'll do. I took this cat tree twine, flattened it out, and glued the ends to make strips. I made a couple of these so that I could layer them like they do for dolls. Everyone Google stuff about doll hair, right? Subscribe so I can start making some doll hairs. <laughs>
Once it was glued in, I was able to style it. But before we get onto the glamour shots, this handsome man is looking a little dry. I brushed some glossy Mod Podge onto the parts I wanted to be a little shiny, leaving the hair and wings with a matte texture. Finally, it's time for the- I f dropped it. So I spent a few hours repairing it, and now it's time for the glamour shots. Shield, swords, great rewards, add it all to the great king's hoard. Add it all to the great king's hoard. Hunt, find, take what's mine. Go down, down where the sun don't shine. Go down, down, down where the sun don't shine. Bobbles, rings, bring him things. Treasure goes to the goblin king. Treasure goes to the goblin king. <laughs> This may be my favorite thing I've ever made. The whole project was inspired by a miscast video where he glued some hair onto one of his weird little creatures. It totally changed the way I thought about making minis and definitely inspired me to experiment more going forward. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can download the goblin song that I wrote for it down in the description below. And please consider subscribing. I promise it won't always be dragons. Let me know what you'd like to see me make next time. And I'll see ya. Bye.